Welcome to the third video of this series. In this video, we'll be looking at how to use spice models. The next step now in this design, we need to replace our ideal switches with MOSFETs. And we could use the MOSFET models that are included with an LTM's library. However, these are generic models. Um, I would like uh, a model that uh, that represents the actual device that I'm going to be using for this project. And that is because I want to, first of all, know if this MOSFET that I picked will actually work, uh, what, what the impact it will have on the circuit performance and how hot is, it is going to get. Uh, so we'll, we will need also a SPICE model for our MOSFET. Now, if I've, I've picked this particular MOSFET from Infineon um, and they do provide the spice models for 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 this particular part now before importing spice models into altium please read this article uh, from altium which explains to you which spice models are supported i've downloaded the spice model from the manufacturer and uh if you open it it, it comes with uh, the, this folder some manufacturers like to put most of their uh, spice models into one uh, compressed archive and you'll have to pick the one that's uh, that you're using uh, before picking the spice model let's have a look at this application note um, uh, which tells you uh, explains to you how to use the MOSFET models from this particular manufacturer now generally for MOSFETs they're usually split into different levels uh, beginning with level 0 and level 3 level 0 just has a, is a simple model level 3 is more advanced includes thermals dynamics um, and is generally more accurate but takes longer time to, to simulate of course each manufacturer have uh, um, their own guide so please uh, consult with the device manufacturer for the spice model that you want to use um, this particular case the manufacturer did include uh, spice models that are compatible with the different simulators that are available. Um, we want to pick the generic one, so I'm going to pick this file and I'm going to place it in the my project directory uh, simulation demo. So this is our file. If we just open it in Notepad, have a quick look at it, and as you can see, it does contain models for many uh, many parts uh, from Infineon, and you notice that they all begin with the uh, dot sub circuit statement some some device models begin with dot model and some begin with dot dot sub circuit and so now we can now include the spice model into altium uh, first of all we will need to create a symbol for our mosfet so let's add in a new schematic library and you, we can either use our own, uh, create your own symbol here, or you can just copy a symbol of a MOSFET that you have perhaps in your own library. So I'm going to copy this one and bring it here. This has only three pins. So now I can add the model for it. So if I browse lib and um, Altium has uh, detected that this file contains contains many spice models we just have to pick the one that we want so we said we're going to pick level zero for this particular uh, project let's do that and you'll have to ensure that uh, pins the pin mapping is correct between the spice model and your uh, schematic so in the, in the model uh, pin three which is the source should match the, the source pin in the schematic and the gate and the drain and it seems to be correct here so let's click OK so we have now added our spice model let's just name this nmos give it Q designator save the file into your project directory and just make sure you save the project validate we're all good and now we go here we'll find we'll find that we have a new schematic library available to us which it belongs to our project and if we just drag and drop this part and now we can replace our switches with this MOSFET. So now I've um, added my MOSFETs and and made the connections in the circuit. You'll notice that I've added a bit more components now. I've added a gate resistance and these two inductances. Now these are not physical inductors, but they represent the parasitic inductances or the loop inductances that might be 
present in our PCB layout. So the first one is the loop inductance that is associated with the gate drive, and the second one is uh, the source inductance that is um, available in this path. Now, in some cases, um, the return path for the gate driver might actually connect uh, here, or it could uh, before the source uh, parasitic inductance, or it, it could be after, and that is depends on the actual MOSFET. Some MOSFETs have a Kelvin source pin, which allows you to minimize the source inductance. I think for this particular case, it's fine if we assume that the return path of our gate drive current is after the source inductance. In fact, you might even make this a bit more complicated and split this in two, but for now, we'll just keep it as one inductance. So to begin with, I've uh, assumed the nominal value for uh, the gate resistance is 5 ohms and 5 nanohenries for these parasitic inductances. I've also specified the frequency as a parameter too, and that is because I'm going to be doing a sensitivity analysis later on. Now, if we just have a look at our pulses now, um, I've replaced the, the frequency number that I had before with the frequency parameter, but by doing so, you do lose the ability to preview your waveform, so just be aware of that. So now if we try to run the simulation, just doing a quick basic transit analysis uh, uh, simulation, so I'm going to be starting from 30 microseconds, and I only would like to see the first five periods after 30 microseconds, so this is how I've, de how I've um, defined it. If you run this now, uh, we can see now that, yes, we've got five periods, and now our switching waveform does contain overshoots and undershoots, and there's a rise time and a fall time, which tells us that our SPICE model is most likely working, and also the parasitics are having an effect. And this is the end of this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at how to set up power measurements and using a